In this video we're going to look at linear functions, so we'll do uh, three examples. Example, first one a taxi fare, we'll do a cinema club and uh, this example on math homework. So, um, and, and, and for each of the uh, homework questions and the examples that we do, we'll, we'll try to do four things. Most important thing is just make a table with four inputs and four outputs. I mean, that's, this is the most important thing. If you do that, then you'll start to understand the whole thing. And then um, determine whether the function is linear. If it is linear, find a formula for it and explain what the growth rate means. Okay? So we'll go over this throughout the video. Now, linear functions, they have a constant growth rate, they have a straight line graph, they have a formula of the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the growth rate and b is the initial value. And in algebra, you've seen this before, where m is the slope, the growth rate, same thing. Uh, b is the y-intercept or initial value, which is the same thing. So I want you to uh, just, whenever you think of, be great if whenever you think of linear functions, just think of a taxi fare. This is the simplest example I can think of. Uh, where the taxi fare is three dollars initially plus two dollars per mile okay for each mile traveled so what I mean is um, if we do a little table we're going to a little table number of miles okay and then the cost of the fare goes here okay and if we plug in uh, numbers of miles then we'll be able to calculate the cost and it's kind of nice to plug in we, we have to think imagine uh, numbers to plug in for number of miles and it's always kind of nice to plug in 0 1 2 3 we all like those numbers right nice and easy so now we need to calculate the cost well let's start with um, let's say you go uh, one mile, right? You're going. It's going to be two dollars per mile. So two times one, let's say, right? Plus three dollars, obviously, right? So how much is that? It's going to be two plus three, five dollars, right? If we were to go two miles, that would be two dollars per mile. So that's four dollars for the miles, right? But there's a this three dollar base fee that's added on plus three, right? Which is four plus three, seven dollars, right? If you were to go um, three miles, what would the cost be? It's two dollars per mile plus three dollars as a kind of a base fee, right? So two times three, which is six, plus three, which is that's six dollars plus three. That's nine dollars, right? And just for for fun, we'll just imagine that if you go zero miles, uh, you, you, you just when you sit in the taxi, you have to pay three dollars, right? So zero miles, three dollars, right? Although practically, that's probably ridiculous. Would a taxi for taxi uh, person charge you money for not going anywhere? But anyway, but we'll just put that in there for fun. So anyway, we have our table, and you know this is this is what should make the most sense right this type of thing right so let's just have a look at how linear functions have a constant growth rate I'll show you what that means if you look at the outputs three five seven nine what do you notice about them no those numbers they're going up by how much each time three to five is up how much five to seven is up how much Seven to nine is over much. For each extra mile you go, right, as these numbers go up by one, as these numbers go up by the same amount, which is one, okay, these numbers go up by two, right? Five to seven. Five plus two is seven. Seven plus two is nine, okay? So these, this is a constant growth. The, the going up by two means, um, each time means it has a constant growth rate okay constant growth rate and we'll 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 give the meaning of it too why not so what we're saying is um the growth rate is constant constant 
constant means the same and um, the growth rate is constant and what does it mean? It means that um, taxi charges two dollars per mile, right? That's what the what the uh, growth rate means, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph it and see if it is indeed a straight line. So really quickly, what are we going to put down on the horizontal axis? What are we going to put on the vertical axis? Well, you need to know your miles to figure out your cost, right? So you start with miles and then you get the cost, right? And the, the variable that you start with is usually called the independent variable and you know that's what you put down here so we would usually put our miles down here right that would make sense right and then you put your cost up here so what's calculated the thing that you calculate usually goes on the vertical axis so we'll just label these I'm, I'm gonna skip every two uh, little grids on the miles here and then the cost I'm also gonna skip every two just to make the graph look nice so um, if I was to plot those points if I go zero miles we decided it was going to be three dollars so zero three here's the point one mile five dollars right one five one mile five dollars can you do the other two points press pause and do the other two points and then tell me if they go in a straight line did you get them to go in a straight line so two miles seven dollars and three miles nine dollars right So all the line, all the points go on a straight line. If you draw a line through the points, you have a, a straight line. So the graph of this uh, function is a straight line, straight line graph. Okay. So that means we have a linear function. So there's there, there, that's two reasons. There's two reasons, uh, or, or three in fact. The, the constant growth rate means it's linear, and, and if you just knew that, you'd know it was linear. Or you could you could graph it and if it's a straight line it's linear but you need to get a, a few points not just two points because two points always make a straight line don't they if you join a line through them anyway or if the formula can be written like this y equals mx plus b that's another way to tell and all these three things uh, mean the same thing right so so that's the straight line graph and we'll just look at the formula now and um, just to before we can't figure out the formula. Uh, one way to help you is I'm just going to ask you this question: If you went 100 miles in the taxi, what would the cost be? If you if you went 100 miles in this taxi, what would they cost? What would they charge you? Wouldn't they charge you two times a hundred for the number of miles? Plus three. Two hundred plus three. Two hundred and three dollars, right? Okay, so to calculate the formula for this, um, we'll put in X for number of miles. If you were to travel X miles, what would the cost be? Let's see if you can get it. If you were to travel a hundred miles, it's two times a hundred plus three, right? But if you were to travel x miles, it would be two times what plus three? Two times x, right? So you could say if miles is x and if cost is y, you could say the cost y equals two times x plus three. Two times the number of miles plus three dollars. You can also get a formula um, which of course is in the same sorry which is in the in the form y equals mx plus b 
right? Y equals mx plus b, where m2 is the growth rate, and the so the fare increases. The two is the growth rate. The fare increases by two dollars for each mile you travel, and the initial value is three. You pay three dollars at the very beginning. Okay. And you can also calculate a formula by using words. Cost equals 2 times number of miles plus $3. Y equals, and in, instead of um, words, you can put a letter, like cost could be Y, so Y equals 2 times X plus 3. Okay. The Cinema Club example, and just like we did in the last example, for each of the homework questions in this section and the examples in the video, we're going to first make a table with at least four inputs and four outputs, and then we'll do other stuff. So, a cinema club, suppose that the cost of watching movies at a movie theater is an annual membership fee of $20 plus $6 for each movie watched. Is the amount of money you pay a linear function of the number of movies you watch in the year? Draw a graph for this function, and we also have to do this stuff. Uh, I'm sorry for the confusing directions. What I'm trying to do is help you out with the textbook because the textbook is saying, is giving you this line is the amount of money you pay a linear function of the number of movies you watch in a year? And it's also giving you directions at the beginning. So I'm trying to help you do your homework but but if we just follow look if we just follow these four steps you know what you can do you can do this see that forget it okay so what you're just going to do is you're going to start with we're going to draw a graph just for fun just to see that this is a linear um, function but you don't have to do that in your homework and you'll, you'll see that in a minute anyway we're just going to follow this make a table with at least four inputs and four outputs let's do that okay table here we go what are the inputs and outputs going to be And you can, you can get an idea for that in this line where it says, is the amount of money you pay a linear function of the number of movies you watch? So what do you start, ha, if, if you were to calculate something, what would, what would you start with, so to speak? What I'm saying is, if, if you know that you were going to watch 10 movies, what would that cost be, right? It's six dollars per movie, so that's six times ten. That's sixty dollars. Then plus twenty is eighty. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is you, you kind of you calculate your number of movies, right? Or you take your number of movies and then you calculate your cost, right? And it's always fun. I always like to throw in the number zero, one, two, three, and then just kind of calculate. Okay, so if you were to, um, let's say, watch uh, one movie, the cost would be $6 per movie, 6 times 1, plus the $20 membership fee, and that makes, that makes 6 plus 20, which is 26, right? If you were to watch two movies, that would be 6 times 2, plus 20, which is 12 plus 20, which is 32. If you were to watch three movies, what would that be? Six times three plus 20, which gives 18 plus 20, 38 dollars, right? You would pay for watching three movies. If you were to watch no movies in the year, what would the cost be? What would the cost be of watching zero movies? It'd be six times zero plus twenty, wouldn't it? Which is zero plus twenty, of course, which is twenty. Or you could just say, well, it's just going to be twenty dollars. That's also true. And um, so we've done our table. That's done. First first part is done, right? Now we're going to try and determine whether the function is linear. And we could, there's kind of two ways. You can graph it and see if you get a straight line. Um, or you can um, just figure out what the, the growth rate 
if whether that is constant. If you figure out the growth rate is constant, then it's linear also. So why don't we do the growth rate for all the questions just so we're consistent with our method. So if you look at the outputs, how this function is growing as the inputs are going up by 1, 20 to 26 is up 6, 26 to 32, that's 6 more, right? Uh, 32 to 38, that's 6 more. So we do indeed have constant growth rate. Or the growth rate is the same each time. And uh, we could even give the meaning uh, while we're at it. Um, unfortunately, that's step four. Sorry, I, I'll. I'll uh, yeah, let's do it now. Hope you're not too confused. Anyway, these are all the things you have to do. Give the meaning of the growth rate. Okay. What does it mean in practical terms? It means that you're paying six dollars per movie, right? Six dollars per movie watched in a year, right? Okay, so we've actually done part four as well here. Sorry about that. Okay, anyway, um, so the function is linear. So constant growth rate, um, uh, we should I should have written in there that the function is linear. I should write that somewhere. Because of the constant growth rate, of course, the function is linear. Okay. A function just means a relationship. A relationship between the number of movies watched and the cost. Relationship between two variables. Okay. So um, we're going to just going to get you to quickly graph this just to see again that a linear function is indeed a straight line. So if I go put my movies down here and put my cost up here, I'll get a straight line. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? Cost. We got twenty, twenty-six, thirty-two, thirty-eight, those type of numbers. Let's go. Hmm. Let's go every two and just do ten. Right, how about that? 0, 10, 20, 30, uh, 40, 50, not perfect, but should work. So, 0, 20, 1, 26, 2, 32, 3, 38, so, and it doesn't matter how you label your your axis, you can do that any way you like, but when you plot your points, they should be in the straight line. I just want you to do that, so at least we have two, in this course we've twice graphed a linear function and shown that it is indeed a straight line, and that's something I really like you to, the only thing you're ever going to learn is what you write down, what you do with your own hands, and so this is, a, I know it's time consuming, but there's no point looking at it in a book or, or watching somebody else do it. When you write it down, that's when it goes into your brain. Okay, writing creates memory and also creates understanding. So I do like you to write it down, please. Okay, so we've done this. Hope you hope you do manage. To, if you haven't got it yet, please press pause and do indeed do this graph. Okay, so we've graphed it, and um, we didn't do this part yet. If the function is linear, find a formula. Okay. So we've got to do a, a table, say whether it's linear, do a formula, explain growth rate. Four things. Okay. So the one thing we haven't done is that the f we we got to do the formula, right? And just to help you out, calculate or writing this formula down, I want to ask you this question: If you were to watch 100 movies in the year, what would the cost be? What would be the cost of watching 100 movies in the year?
wouldn't it be six times one hundred six hundred dollars right plus the twenty dollar membership so six hundred plus twenty that'd be six hundred and twenty dollars right so if we were to replace number of movies if we were to imagine number of movies as a letter let's say you know X what would the cost be in that case six times what plus what see if you can get it what would the cost be to watch X number of movies 100 movies six times 100 plus 20 X movies six times what plus 20 six times X plus 20 right so our formula could be the cost or uh, you know you could call this the you know the input X and the cost could be say Y the cost Y equals 6 times X plus 20 right which course is in the form y equals mx plus b and of course the growth rate is m is six six dollars per movie right and the initial value b is twenty it's twenty dollars membership fee you start with paying twenty dollars and you pay six dollars more each time you watch a movie okay so another way to get that formula course is say well cost is six times number of movies plus twenty dollars right or and in that case you can turn the, the words into letters y equals six times x plus twenty so that's another way to help you get the formula okay so on to the next example the math homework example and we'll follow these four steps again so now the first step is just make a table with at least four inputs and four outputs so let's go ahead and do that suppose that you have already completed 300 math problems last month and uh, sorry, I meant to say month here this month you continue working at a rate of 20 problems per day okay is the total number of problems you complete a linear function of the number of days you have been working this month okay so we're going to just make a table with at least four inputs and four outputs so let's start with that what are your inputs and outputs going to be and this question that that you see on your textbook homework should help you it, it kind of gives you is the total number of problems total number of problems you complete a linear function of the number of days so it gives you two variables in that sentence number of days number of problems right what depends on what 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 would you put where in this table you would what would you calculate if, if you know what I mean I mean basically pick the number 10 okay pick the number 10 here's here's the number 10 right if you're gonna work 10 days how much prob how many problems would you get done have done all together twenty problems per day so be twenty times ten that's two hundred problems plus the initial amount of three hundred and that would make five hundred problems in that done after ten days right does that make sense so my point is you kind of start with number of days and then you calculate the number of problems that you got done altogether right number of days this month you know so let's just for fun zero one two three they're all usually nice numbers to, to use uh, for these problems uh, so um, after zero days you know this month number of days working this month zero days you, you have your 300 problems completed already right uh, one day this month if you just work for one day how many problems would you have completed what do 
Well, you got your 300 to begin with, and then an extra 20, right? So you'd say, okay, 20 times one day plus 300, and that gives us 320, right? After two days, how many problems would you have completed? Twenty times two plus three hundred, right? Which would be forty plus three hundred, three hundred and forty. How about after three days? Write it down. After three days, twenty times three, sixty plus three hundred, right? Which is three hundred and sixty. Okay. So we've done our table with four inputs and four outputs. We're going to now determine whether the function is linear. Is the function linear? How do you know? <laughs> well, let's every time let's just see if we've got a constant growth rate. Our we know the the inputs the, the independent variable the inputs that this is just increasing by 1, okay? Uh how about the outputs? the function values are increasing by what? If these are increasing by the same amount, then it's a linear function. If 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 you've got a constant growth rate, that's a linear function. If if the, the values of the the outputs or the the function values are increasing by the, just the same amount each time, then it's constant a, a linear function or constant growth rate, right? So 300 to 320, that's 20 more. 320 to 3 340, that's 20 more. 340 to 360, that's 20 more. So we do indeed have a constant growth rate, right? So it is a linear function. Uh, we have to give the meaning of the growth rate, of course. <coughs> In practical terms, um, is linear, how about that, that'll do. The function is linear, we have a linear function. Okay, what's, and um, we've got a, a, yeah, sorry. Got to find a formula and then we'll give the meaning of the, the growth rate. So, um, it doesn't really matter what you do first. I, I don't know why the book has the meaning at the end. Anyway, let's just give the meaning now, why not? The meaning of the growth rate is in practical terms the growth rate is 20 by the way the growth rate is 20 and, and it means uh, 20 problems done per day make sense? that's the meaning of the growth rate 20 problems are done per day right? now we're going to calculate a formula for this um, function. So I always like to ask, well, if you're working for say a hundred days, you know, this or well actually it wouldn't be a hundred because it's gotta be this month, huh? Sorry, let's just do uh twenty. Uh no, that's not good either. How about uh how about uh fifteen? Okay. If you're working just any number, if you're working for 15 days, doing your math homework every day for 15 days, how many problems would you have completed altogether after 15 days? Well, it's 20 problems per day is what you're doing, right? So would it be 20 times 15 plus the 300 that you began with? Right? So that would be, of course, 300 plus 300, 600 problems altogether, right? So if you're working for X number of days, how many after this month, how many um, math problems would you get done after X number of days? So after 15 days, it's 2 times 15 plus 300. After X days, what would it be? Write down the answer. 
20 times what plus 300? 20 times x, right? So our x is number of days, right? And our, our number of problems, let's call that y. So, or, so we can say that this is, you know, number of problems y equals 20 times x number of days plus 300. Okay. Which is, of course, of the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the growth rate, 20 problems extra done per day that you're working on the math, and b is the initial value. We started with 300 problems already done from last month. And um, we could also say number of problems done equals 20 times number of days plus 300. That's another way of doing it, right? And if you call number of problems y, you've got y equals 20 number of days x plus 300. 20 plus 300. That's another way of doing it, right? So that's the formula anyway. y equals 20x plus 300.